Magneto. Leaping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's transcribed episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled The Dancing Ghosts of Rocky Hills. Perched high on a rocky crag overlooking the ocean, not many miles from York City, sits Gray Crag's Manor. Surrounded by high stone walls, the large house dominates an estate of some 300 acres in Rocky Hills, East Chester County. Residents of Rocky Hills say the place is haunted. Some claim to have seen from a distance on moonlight nights the shadowy figures of dancers in the ballroom of the east wing of the manor. As our story opens today, patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, little realizes that his next adventure will take him to Gray Crag's manor. He is talking with his friend, Dr. Franz, in the little apothecary shop. Uh, Danny, uh, here's an item I clipped out of the personal column of the Chronicle this morning. Hmm. Addressed to the Blue Beetle. Hmm, I thought you'd be interested. <laughs> Somebody's kidding the Blue Beetle. You think so? <laughs> yeah, listen. Attention, Blue Beetle. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and scared the poor girl away. Why should anyone address nursery rhyme to me? Uh, there's a secret message in cipher concealed in that nursery rhyme. Are you serious, Doc? Yes. I deciphered it just before you came in. Well, what's the message, Doc? And how were you able to solve it? Well, the difference in size of type used throughout the rhyme gave me a clue. The young lady has evidently been reading Francis Bacon. Young lady? Yes, young lady. <laughs> well, this begins to look like a romantic adventure. And what makes you think she's been reading Francis Bacon? Well, he used to write many of his plays and poems in cipher similar to this. That's very interesting. What message did you evolve from this nursery, doggerel doc? Well, here it is, deciphered. Young heiress in dire distress. Only Blue Beetle can help. Come alone, midnight, Gray Crag's Manor. Urgent. Gray Crag's Manor. I thought at Rocky Hill. Yes, the place is supposed to be haunted. Ah, it sounds like a trap for the Blue Beetle, but it's certainly intriguing. Yes, isn't it? I think I'll take a run out there now and look the place over by daylight. Oh, why don't you? Uh, but be careful, Danny. That section used to be infested with bootleggers and rum runners during Prohibition. It's along the seashore, lots of coves and inlets with rocky cliffs overhanging the sea. Sounds interesting. Are you planning on taking Officer Manigan with you? Oh, poor Mike's laid up with a bad case of poison ivy. Uh, that's tough on Mike. Yes, the old war horse is champing at the bit. I'm going to drop by and see him. Well, tell him I hope he'll be back on the job again soon. I will. Goodbye, Doc. See you later. Check the roll, buddy. No, I have plenty of oil, thanks. What do I owe you? Up, Buck. There you are. Oh, thanks. By the way, uh, who lives in that old mansion up on the hill overlooking the ocean there? Mostly ghosts, buddy. Don't tell me you believe in ghosts. Well, I don't know. Some folks in the village here claim to have heard music and seen figures dancing in a ballroom as they walk along the road. Hasn't anyone visited the place? Nobody around here. There's a guy with a club foot on guard at the entrance to the estate. A sort of a caretaker. He don't let nobody in. Doesn't anybody live in the manor house? Yeah, there's a young girl, Rosalie Greenhole, and her aunt just moved in. She inherited the place of Hoyt. Is that so? How, uh, how recently did they move in? Oh, about a week ago. Ever see them? Sure. They drive by here every day in an old-fashioned carriage drawn by a couple of swell-looking horses. Who drives them? An old man in an old-fashioned coachman's uniform. <laughs> you sure they're not all ghosts? Well, sure, I'm sure. Well, Joe Digby on the corner there sells some groceries and things. He says the coachman does all the ordering. The girl and her aunt don't talk to nobody. They're kind of snooty, Joe says. Well, that's very interesting. I've got to get along. Ghosts or no ghosts, a fellow's got to make a living. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Well, so long, buddy, and stay away from haunted houses. I 
was wondering if I could drive through the gates there and up to the manor house. I'm a camera fiend, and I'd like to take some shots of the house in the ocean. Ain't no one allowed on the grounds. Owner's orders. No. Well, uh, you suppose if I phoned up to the house from your lodge there, the owners would give me permission to take some pictures? Ain't got no phone. Uh-huh. What are those uh, wires running up the road there? Uh, them? Uh, why, them's electric light wires. I see. Well, thanks for the information. Oh, excuse me, stranger. My, my alarm clock's going off. Must have said it wrong this morning. Hello. That you, Clubfoot? This is Blackie. What's that? Some guy wanted to take pictures of the place. It wasn't a harness wall, was it? Ah, all right. Now listen. The girl got a message out to the Blue Beetle somehow... The old man's lawyer saw it in the newspaper. Be on the lookout for the Blue Beetle. With the spider wise too. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, Spider's taking a suitcase of the queer over to Mac at Hastings when he takes the girl and the rat out for a drive. Right. Well, take care of things. Bye-bye. <laughs> I wonder if the blue beetle got my... What's that noise? Oh. Good evening. Or should I say good morning? The blue beetle? Yes, the blue beetle. You sent for me. Here I am. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm in such trouble and so frightened. Will you help me? The blue beetle is always ready to help anyone in distress. I didn't know what to do. You were the only one I felt could help me. I'm watched every minute. This place is... It's so spooky. It terrifies me. Then why do you stay here? I must. By the terms of my late uncle's will, I have to remain here until I'm 21 in order to inherit the money that goes with this place. Mm, that's a strange condition to put in a will. Who lives here with you? My maiden aunt, Uncle Nathaniel's sister, Abigail. If you're watched the way you say you are, how did you get the message in the Chronicle? Well, I wrote a note to the Chronicle and closed some money with it in a stamped envelope and addressed it and dropped it outside of Digby's grocery store yesterday hoping that someone would find it and mail it. Well, what goes on here? Why all the secrecy? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but but I've seen some of the strangest men around here. I've heard the gatekeeper call our coachman Spider, and I heard Spider call the gatekeeper Clubfoot. Mr. Jasper, that's Uncle's lawyer, says that they're old retainers of Uncle Nathaniel's. The others, he says, are workmen hired to fix the place, but they seem to work only at night. Hmm. What's that? What's that music? Well, that's one of the things that frightens me. It's so ghostly. It comes from the other wing of the house. Have you ever been in that part of the house, Miss Greenhold? No. No, the door to that wing is locked, and I'm not permitted to go there. Mr. Jasper says that Uncle wanted that wing kept sacred to memories of his only love. A girl he met at a dance in the ballroom there one moonlit night. She died the night they were to be married. Hmm. I'd like to get over there and make a little investigation. Well, I can show you the iron door that leads to that wing of the house, but you'll find it locked. The Blue Beetle carries master keys to all locks. Let's have a look. Here you are. Right through here. Now down this passageway. Here we are. That's the door to the east wing. Hmm. Now we'll just try these keys... No, not that one. Here's one that looks as if it might fit. Uh-huh. There we are. Look. Look there. There are shadows of dancers on the wall. But no sound of voices. It, it's uncanny. It must be... Ghosts. I've always wanted to meet a ghost. You stay here. I'd better lock this door after me. Oh, no, please take me with you, Blue Beetle. I'm afraid to be left alone no, here. No, no, no. You'll be safer in your part of the house. I'll be back as soon as I've had a look around. <laughs> the Blue Beetle walks into the trap. <laughs> Down you go into the prison pit with the ghosts of the departed pirate captives. So you wanted to meet a ghost. Well, you'll meet plenty down there. Blue Beetle! <laughs> Blue Beetle, what happened to you? What happened to the Blue Beetle?
What has happened to the Blue Beetle? Who are the strange people who have made Gray Crag's Manor their headquarters? Can the Blue Beetle extricate himself and solve the mystery of the dancing ghosts of Rocky Hills? These questions will be dramatically answered in the next transcribed episode of the Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics magazine and the Blue Beetle magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.